Welcome fellow Bereans. This is an Aiken Block video production. We cover a wide range of biblical topics. Our purpose is to shed light on errors taught by the mainstream churches. We trust you will find this video informative and beneficial. God bless. The title of this section is Antichrist, Deposing Christ, High Priest. Who is the intercessor of our confession, despised and rejected, a man of sorrows? Stricken and afflicted, wounded and oppressed, who has borne our grief, paid our debt, felt our pain, healed our hurts, and shared our joy? Who alone is the high priest of our confession? None but Christ Jesus, who, humbled, made of no reputation, became obedient unto death, mocked and forsaken, yea, crucified. This high priest is seated at the right hand of God, where he mediates on our behalf, the priesthood having been changed from corruptible to incorruptible, and the old priesthood abolished. The author of Hebrews writes that Christ is the one high priest, and Peter wrote that all who believe on him are co-equal priests, a royal priesthood, thus confirming the disannulment of the old ceremonial and hierarchical system. On the cross, Jesus cried, It is finished, and immediately thereafter the veil in the temple was rent, symbolizing man's access to the Father in heaven through Christ and Christ alone. Prior to Christ's death on the cross, only the high priests of Israel could pass through the veil into the Holy of Holies. There they would go to make atonement for the sins of the people. Still, no man can go into the presence of God except through Christ, our imperishable High Priest, who alone cleanses us from sin and imputes His righteousness to all who believe on His name. Conversely, Antichrist assumes the role of High Priest when he presumes to mediate sacraments, calling God down from heaven and transforming a wafer into very God and mysteriously converting wine into the actual blood of Christ. By this, Antichrist and his battalions of Antichrist wizard priests re-sacrifice Christ thousands of times every day across the earth in defiance of Hebrews chapter 10 verses 10 and 18, which state, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And now, where remission of these is there no more offering for sin? Compare this biblical declaration of the one-time sacrifice of Christ for the remission of sin to the Roman Catholic doctrine codified at the Council of Trent, declaring a need for the ongoing sacrifice of the Mass, and obviously a priest to perform. Council of Trent, quote, Canon 3. If anyone saith that the sacrifice of the Mass is only a sacrifice of praise and of thanksgiving, or that it is a bare commemoration of the sacrifice consummated on the cross, but not a propitiatory sacrifice, or that it profits him only who receives, and that it ought not to be offered for the living and the dead for sins, pains, satisfactions, and other necessities, let him be anathema. Canon number 4. If anyone saith that by the sacrifice of the Mass a blasphemy is cast upon the most holy sacrifice of Christ, consummated on the cross, or that it is thereby derogated from, let him be anathema. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 in opposition to canon law affirms, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Thus the Council of Trent and Scripture cannot be reconciled on this matter. Scripture says Christ's sacrifice on the cross was once and for all, and that after that no sacrifice is of any worth. Trent demands that the Mass is a propitiatory sacrifice and beneficial for the remission of sins. Moreover, it declares that all who say otherwise are cursed. I submit to you that the inverse is true that in fact the one who calls Christ a liar is cursed and antichrist. And the one who usurps the office of priest and high priest denies Christ, who is the only high priest. And that very vicar of Christ who places himself over all denies the co-equal and royal priesthood of all believers under Jesus Christ, the true head and cornerstone of the church. 
Who is Antichrist but one who denies Christ? Reformer John Wycliffe wrote of this blasphemous cabal of Antichrists, all popes since the endowment of the church, all cardinals, bishops, and all the accomplices. Antichrist is thus a monstrous composite personality. And J. A. Wiley wrote of this substitute church and priesthood, quote, Popery has a god of its own, him even whom the canon law calls the Lord our God. It has a savior of its own, the church to wit. It has a sacrifice of its own, the mass. It has a mediator of its own, the priesthood. It has a sanctifier of its own, the sacrament. It has a justification of its own, that even of infused righteousness. It has a pardon of its own, the pardon of the confessional. And it has in the heavens an infallible, all-prevailing advocate unknown to the gospel, the Mother of God. Having previously discussed Antichrist's replacement soteriology and substitute priesthood, we turn to the confessional booth. Here priests of Antichrist religion stand between man and God, and sitting in the place of Jesus Christ, presuming the power to forgive sins, and hollowly echoing Christ's words, Thy sins are forgiven. Meanwhile, the penitent, placing their faith in man-made rituals, systems, and the false authority of Antichrist priests, are filled with empty hope and their sins pile up like heaps of trash, never truly being laid at the foot of the cross, where the only high priest and mediator between God and man can forgive them. These high priests of Antichrist proclaim, Fear not. You have the blessings of purgatory to look forward to. There you can suffer for your own sins, if in this life there's any oversight on your part. So not only does the spawn of Antichrist substitute himself for Christ in the confessional, he provides the option to detour around the cross at Calvary and erect your own cross in purgatory, where, like him, you too may take the place of Christ. Can there be any other religious system on earth that so perfectly eliminates Christ from the equation while appearing to include him? Is there anywhere a more deceitful counterfeit pretending to offer the very purity of the gospel, while in parallel so distorting it that if it were possible, even the elect might be deceived. Is this not Paul's discourse in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, where he declares of Antichrist, After the workings of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And did Jesus not warn his disciples of it in Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 through 26? Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Are these high priests of Antichrist not false Christs and false prophets? And is their doctrine of transubstantiation not a great wonder? And seeing Antichrist sitting in a dark and secret chamber, every whit a confessional booth, Should we not heed Christ's warning and avoid that cursed cubicle and satanic priesthood? We should. And then, taking comfort from John's words, turn to Christ and there, and nowhere else, make confession. He writes, The blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A Roman Catholic priest cannot absolve us of sin, let alone the Pope and Antichrist. This has been an Aiken Block video production. Thank you for watching. May the Lord guide you into all truth. God bless.